Welcome to a new episode of Learn from the Pros. Aggressive attacking chess is what characterizes the style of Veselin Topalov and this is exactly what we are going to see in this game against Ruslan Ponomaryov. Topalov here with the white pieces played h4 which clearly shows that he has no intention or whatsoever of castling himself. What he wants is to make the opponent's king. So what happens if black develops normally for instance with knight d7? Well, here already bishop takes h7 would win the game. After king h7, knight g5 check. If the king goes back to g8, then after queen h5 we are threatening mate on h7. And in case of bishop takes g5, the point behind h4 is that all these captures we recapture with the h-pawn opening the h5 for the rook. So now queen h8 or queen h7 would be a mate. Black has to try to play f6 or f5, but now a very important move, g6. This pawn takes away the escaping root of the black king and now queen h8 is going to be a mate. It's impossible to defend against this mate. But what about knight g5, king g6? Because the king can also go to g6. Now the problem is queen g4. We are threatening knight takes e6, discover check, winning the queen, delivering mate on g7, all sorts of stuff. And after f5, an important move is h5 check, luring the king to h6 to enter this diagonal, after which knight f7 is a double check, discover double check, winning the queen. After king h7, queen g6, we move a queen with a check and then we capture black's queen. So in this position, after h4, black already has to start defending. The threat is bishop takes h7. Uh, what can black do against it? Well, he should prevent it, for instance, with h6 and that's what Ponomaryov played. But now h6 has weakened the light squares and Topalov already takes advantage of it. He plays bishop b1, preparing queen c2. This battery on the light squares will be very strong, threatening mate once again on h7. Um, here, black tried to close this diagonal with f5, but of course Topalov doesn't want to let that pawn remain on f5. He captured this pawn immediately. And after bishop takes f6, well, the f file has been opened for black. He's threatening our rook. It seems like black is fine. Um, and if a piece is hanging, normally we move it, but not Topalov. He played queen c2, giving up this rook. Um, the funny thing is that after bishop takes c3, sorry, a d4 was the move that, play, that was played in the game. After bishop takes c3, there's no mate. There's no mate with queen h7. He can give a check. He can give another check. It's just a perpetual check. Um, what's the point of this is that Actually, after bishop takes c3, he simply wanted to recapture with the bishop. So it is an exchange sacrifice. Even this knight is hanging on f3. But now after rook takes f3, problems really come. The two bishops on these diagonals, the queen there, it's going to be mate in a few moves. Let's just see how. After king f7, queen takes g7, king e8, bishop g6. And after rook f7, queen takes f7, it's a mate. So bishop takes e3, bishop takes e3, even if black doesn't capture the knight, it is an exchange down for white, but with extremely strong pieces. All the white pieces are heading towards the white king. Even this h1 rook is going to attack because we're just gonna play knight g5 opening the h5. So this position is very bad for black. That's why after queen c2, uh, Ponomaryov decided not to capture the rook, but attack it with a pawn. Because if you attack a rook with a pawn, well, the rook has to move. It's not normal to give up a rook for a pawn, is it? Well, Topalov doesn't care that his rook is hanging. He just puts yet another piece into capture. So now black can either capture the rook, he can capture the knight. Um, so many pieces are hanging, but black is mated. So if d takes c3, obviously queen h7 is a mate. But what about h takes g5? We capture this knight and then we will capture the rook. h takes g5, simply opening the h5. Now it's a piece down for white. d takes e3, it's a rook and a piece down. And there's no mate. So what was the point of giving up a rook and a piece? Well, queen h7 could be played. But as I already told you, with this bishop on f6, um, the king can escape. So there's no immediate mate. 
and our bishop is hanging so g takes f6 is g takes f6 is not good because of c takes d2 here in this position where topalov has a rook and a piece down he didn't give any checks he didn't capture anything what he did was playing bishop f4 and actually this is my favorite move from the game because it's such a calm move in a position where you already sacrifice so much material that if you don't give mate then you have to resign he plays bishop f4 avoiding that his bishop will be captured and now everything is in the air g takes f6 queen h7 even rook h8 is a threat and he just keeps this bishop because he needs that bishop what happens if black, black plays bishop d4 saying that he's a bishop and a, a rook up and there's no mate well queen g6 this once again is not a check it's not a capture but it's an extremely strong move after queen g6 the black king cannot escape he cannot go to f7 anymore the threat is rook h8 check king takes queen h7 mate and it's basically not possible to defend it against it he has to play something like rook f5 trying to close the diagonal after which bishop takes e takes and queen e6 king f8 rook h8 mate so this position queen g6 rook and the piece down white is not giving a check he hasn't captured anything but you cannot do anything against the rook h8 king takes h8 queen h7 mate incredible isn't it so in the position after bishop f4 black decided to try to run with the king he played king f7 but now queen g6 king e7 g takes f6 if he captures with the pawn then of course rook h7 and its mate so rook takes f6 had to be played but now queen g7 rook f7 bishop g5 white will tr uh, start to capture pieces now both of the queens are hanging so we shouldn't capture black's one because we will lose our one but queen takes f7 is just good enough we give up that bishop now it's only a piece down for white there are not so many pieces left and the funny thing is that now at this very moment white only has two attacking pieces the queen and the rook but that's a lot in comparison to what black has because black has a very exposed king and just look at these pieces on the queen side they are not doing anything just absolutely nothing that's what they do uh, the only active piece of black is the queen but um, with one piece you cannot do miracles uh, he can give a few checks he can even win the bishop queen c1 is a double attack you win the bishop but if you capture the bishop it's queen c7 mate so what black did was giving a check on e5 king f1 and king c6 try to defend at least this c7 square with the queen but now after queen e8 king d6 uh, sorry king, king b6 queen d8 and king c6 this is a position where we already attack with the queen the rook and the only piece that doesn't help us is this bishop from b1 the last piece comes to the attack joins the attack with bishop e4 deflecting the queen from e5 because after queen takes e4 it's already mate on c7 once again this queen c7 mate isn't that beautiful this was the final position where ponemario resigned i hope you liked this game and you learned a lot from it it was incredible for me to see this rook and piece sacrifice and then not giving any checks not capturing anything just having so many threats on the board that black couldn't do anything with his material advantage and look at those pieces on the queen side the rook on a8 the knight on b8 the bishop on a6 they were not doing anything for the whole game and they couldn't help the black king escape thank you very much for watching and see you in another clip